So here's a demonstration of the referee system. And basically what it is, is a replacement for find object calls. Uh, the, the, all the default Unity API calls, um, they're very slow. The, the way it works under the hood is it uses marshalling from uh, the mono framework, which we are writing your scripts on, into uh, the C++ engine through their serialization. Uh, that process in and of itself, regardless of anything uh, Unity specific, just .NET in general, it's very, very expensive. Um, it has to essentially marshal from managed to unmanaged code. Um, there's a ton of information on that on MSDN if you want to look it up. Um, essentially, anytime in your script code, if you're doing a find object by tag or name or something, uh, it is going to tell the Unity API, hey, I want to go under the, the hood. I want you to look through the, your compiled running engine on anything that might match this tag. And it's going to go into unmanaged code. It's going to look through all its compiled C++ runtime, everything in memory. And it's going to uh, look through all of its arrays. Once it finds that component or object, it will then serialize it back and send it up the chain back to you into managed code. All the while, every one of those, every step of that process is uh, creating um, uh, temporary buffers and allocations and all kinds of stuff. So essentially, what this hits on is, is garbage collection. A lot of garbage collection art artifacts get created during marshaling. So. If you're doing this on a um, frame-by-frame -frame basis and uh, let's say you have an R RTS game and you have you know 100 units out and you want you have like a predefined UI button where the user can push it and select all infantry troops, that find call is going to hit, let's say you got 100 infantry troops out, it's going to have 100 um, whatever data block size um, uh, temp, uh, garbage collection temp buffers are all going to get instantiated and the entire gar garbage collection process is going to have to track all of that. So frame by frame you exponentially get higher and higher and higher and every time uh, Unity's engine says hey I think it's an okay time to do some garbage collection and start killing off some objects you're going to have a spike. Uh, every single time you'll have a spike in that and the higher it is the higher the spike and the lower the frames per second and potential glitches that you're actually going to see at the user experience level so you want to minimize that obviously um, and this is something you want to do from the get-go instead of just um, trying to do performance engineering after you have a large code base so that's uh, that's how the, the garbage collection and marshalling actually works <clears throat> And on devices like ARM devices, uh, there's not a lot of memory to begin with, so garbage collection happens more frequently. Uh, you're going to notice it a lot quicker on any mobile device. So how we implement this, uh, it's, it's essentially by um, setting up some base classes and um, having a framework and sticking to it. And this framework is very, very light. It's very simple. Um, there's really no code you have to do, and uh, we're implementing all the same find calls that uh, the game object dot find uh, gives you. So find by name, find all by name, find by tag, find all by tag. And if you don't like that, we give you the list it, itself too that you can uh, do link queries against it and just look at it yourself. So um, how we do this? This is the example scene. So I have a super cube. There's six of them out here, and they all have a uh, super cube reference on it. Um, the referee right here, that's the guy that manages everything. Um, this code is uh, inheriting a base class so you don't have to do anything. And I also have a generator here, which I'll sh we'll get into. Um, generate, uh, create a strong type referee component. Uh, you basically target a current script that you want uh, to to you know, populate in like your infantry uh, soldier script itself, um, you could create a generate a referee off of that, and then just uh, attach it to a game object. So the cube itself has the super cube script, and that's 
basically what I was saying, uh, like your infantry script. So this guy is, um, there's a common class out here. Uh, basically, I have a referee behavior that you can inherit off of, and it doesn't really do anything outside of it has uh, on enable and on disable already implemented, and they throw not implemented exceptions. So it basically forces you to implement this. Uh, if you try to play your project, uh, it will throw exceptions right off the get-go, um, saying, hey, you didn't implement this. Uh, not, it's not going to work right. Uh, and that's by design, because y you have to implement uh, on enable and on disable for this uh, tracking system to work. Uh, it's not required though. If you don't want to, you don't have to. That's what this commented block out here is. Um, Supercube just inheriting basic mono behavior. Uh, the same stuff, just on on enable, on disable. They both work identical. It's just uh, in the comment here. You see, it does not force you to implement it, and it will break if they're not present. Um, so this is just a you know safeguard approach because uh, clean code is is good maintenance. Uh, Let's look at the referee pool. So the the referee pool itself, um, the referee manager is a base class that uh, is a generic template. If you don't know about generics, uh, you don't have to. Um, this just works. All you have to do is just inherit it off of it. So Supercube referee uh, inherits referee manager type of um, Supercube. So that script that um, is going to be on the actual object goes there. Uh, there's no code to implement. It all comes from the base class. Uh, that's the beauty of generics. You don't have to do anything. And that guy goes there. So we can delve into the uh, the manager code itself, but it's not not needed. Uh, when this when this plays, all of these events. Uh, the on enable and on disable is going to tell this guy, hey, I exist, hey, I don't exist. So let's say element one super cube reference. Let's go here. It highlights this guy. So that's actually this object. And if we disable it, he goes away. That's uh, what we expect, right? It goes away in the game. Um, now, if we look at this, the cube list again, the referee pool, uh, it's down to five now. Um, he's gone. If we check them back on, the on enable will re-add them. So it's a it's a pu publish and uh, um, pub sub um, framework. So it's very light. Uh, there's not a whole lot of data going across. It's just what happens happens. Fire and forget, and um, the referee becomes your system of record for uh, looking up and, and getting access to any of the active super cubes in your in your scene. So that that's uh basically the the implementation of you know structuring it in the scene uh, it's very very quick um th there's like i said there's, there's really no overhead and we want to make it as easy as possible with you know you just inherit this class and you're done um no code to write uh the only thing you have to do is in order to get this to work um the referee has to exist before um, the tar the target component that you're going to um, track because those events are going to have to fire off. Um, in order to do that, uh, the project settings script execution order, uh, that's something that Unity added um, a long time ago. Um, it, it's kind of required if you start doing anything that has uh, dependencies. So in order to use this, if you never have, um, you click this little plus button, and it's going to iterate through all your scripts. And you select the referee. I'll just remove this real quick. So I would say, oh, here's my super cute referee. I'm going to add it. Here's default time. And that's when anything that's not specified is going to just car blanche the load. Um, whatever script is next in Unity's for loop under the hood is going to compile. Um, we don't want that for this guy. So we want him to happen before. Uh, hit apply. And you can have as many referees above here. Uh, you can have your own scripts above here. That's fine. Uh, it just can't. This can't. This has to be before Supercube. 
So uh, this guy, this would work, this would fail, and that would work, and just get rid of it, and that'll work. Uh, if if you do have it. When we play it, we're going to have a bunch of NOLA errors because it just doesn't exist yet, and we're trying to add to a list that doesn't exist. So that's pretty much it. Um, the benefits is you, you, you get a lot of quick access to your, to your objects. Um, if you come from a C++ world or uh, you're used to having more control over things, uh, this is going to be more comfortable for you than letting the magic world of garbage collection take care of your objects for you because it's generally something every game developer wants to avoid. Um, now if you're not really a developer that's where um, uh, this guy came came from. Um, just a quick way to generate uh, these classes if you're afraid to make a C++ class or uh, I'm sorry a C Sharp class and just inherit off that object. Uh, or you don't want to switch to model develop, you can do that this way. So here's my debug trigger. Um, and this is important to note, it's not any scene items, it's actually uh, assets in your project. Um, so select that script. And this is the path it's going to save to. You can add to that if you wish. Uh, and just it created it. Here's the uh, debug trigger, referee.cs. And there's the path it saved it to. Uh, so there's the script, and that's all it really did. And it did import a namespace. Uh, this debug trigger, uh, this this component, I had in a specific namespace. So it actually found it and imported it as a using. Um, and now this guy's just good to go. Uh, I can. I can add him real quick, and he, he just works. Uh, there's debug trigger. Remember, you have to set the execution order. Okay, I pause it real quick just to add those the on enable and disable. So now I have that. All it does is add it to the debug trigger referee um, dot instance dot add and remove. And now when I play it, it notifies the referee that it exists. So now you can then uh, access your triggers. And let's say it gets used and the player hits it, it goes away. Now your list is empty. So if you have some sort of logic that you have to hit all these certain puzzle pieces in order for something to progress. You can then do this without impacting your gameplay. So that's the referee system. Um, uh, hopefully on larger projects it, it will actually give you a noticeable performance increase. Uh, and, uh, and hope you enjoy it. Thanks.